welcome uh, to this uh, study of uh, salient pole synchronous machines and uh, in uh, this salient pole synchronous machine similarly can be operated both as motor and generator mode. In case of motor mode uh, and phasor diagram is very important in synchronous machines. Uh, in case of cylindrical synchronous machine the we drew the equivalent circuit uh, e EF, ZS and terminal voltage. In salient pole synchronous machine uh, it is not done, it, it, it uh, is difficult to obtain some equivalent circuit of that sort because of the presence of two reactances, synchronous reactances. So, one is along d axis, these are the key words in x d and x q. What is x d? x d is its armature reaction reactance plus x l x q is x a r q plus x a l. Anyway, this we have discussed. So, and x d will be much higher than x q and r a sometimes is neglected. Also, we know how to draw, take into account the effect of r a. Okay. So, uh, this is the thing and uh, in our last classes, we uh, found out the uh, uh, we were trained to draw the feather diagram correctly. That is essentially you have to determine q, uh, uh, what to draw in the feather diagram. I must be provided with this information that motor is uh, tell me motor is operating either in generator mode or motor mode that is one information whether that generator is uh, operating at lagging power factor and how much current it is supplying. So, I a theta and terminal voltage will be known and then you can draw the feather diagram. In case of generator E a f is equal to V plus I a r a plus J i d x d plus J i q x q. Since I d I q are different, so they cannot be put in a single circuit and say that x d x q in series or they are in parallel, no it is not possible. Separately you have to do, in case of generator mode, uh, this, this point uh, must be very carefully handled that is V is equal to I a r a plus uh, J i d x d plus J i q x q and I d I q will be different because armature current is broken up into diff. So, they cannot be represented in series or in parallel no. So, so the important point is from the knowledge of V I A theta get delta and then generator mode V is here delta will E f will be above it which will be along q axis then draw d axis then I A theta is known break it up i d i q go on adding these drops you will correctly land up with the feather diagram. And we have uh, extensively discussed about this. Now, today another important thing I will do that is called the expression for power, expression for power. Like in uh, cylindrical machine, we found that the real power was equal to E f v by excess sin delta, where delta is the angle. So, similar expression we will try to derive for a salient pole machine. And in this expression, recall R a was assumed to be 0. And uh, of course, I could take R a into account another term will come and the, the, the essential for uh, deriving this type of equation started uh, we started with the fact that V i a star we did and we got the in one stroke we can obtain the expression for both real power kilowatt 
and the reactive power how much the machine is handling. So, first we what we will do is this expression for power a saline pole generator generator um, say delivering lagging power factor current lagging delivering uh, I A at lagging power factor. What is the expression of S? Both real and reactive can be found out. Okay. So, we will start and we will first find out surface power then at the end we will multiply with 3 to get the total power expression or torque. Because the moment you get power expression you can easily find out torque because speed is constant. So, in synchronous watt uh, the torque is also derived in one stroke. Let us see. So, I will say that S so, it is a generator at a term in per phase it is delivering a current I A that is the thing. So, S will be V I A star per phase this is the thing, but we know that or I will draw the feather diagram it will be. So, this is the starting point <coughs> and rest of the things are routine works except that you have to draw the feather diagram with R A equal to 0 you start with V you draw I A you know theta then delta is known tan delta expression and I will draw then q axis and I will draw then d axis. Then I will break up this as I d and I q and this is delta tan delta is known and then if r a is neglected r a is 0 then e f e f this is true is equal to v plus j i d x d plus j i q x q. So, v plus i d x d it will be like this this is j i d x d and you know to this you add this one j i q x q and this length will be your e f e f. Okay, and uh, this uh, this whole angle is also psi and this is psi we have got this. Now, this voltage feather V it can be written as this voltage can be also thought of consisting of this and this is not and this is V d and this is V q. V d is V sin delta and V q is V sin delta. What I am telling is this V can be written as V d plus J V q what else this feather plus this feather. Similarly, I A can be written as 
vector i d feather plus j i q what else. Now, power I am planning to do this operation b i a star therefore, i a is this. So, i a star complex conjugate will be i d minus j i q is not this will be the thing then I have to multiply this two to get power. So, let us multiply. So, voltage is V d plus J V q and complex conjugate of the current is I d minus J I q. So, open the brackets uh, so that uh, I am sorry this I must write s total complex power and this will be equal to real part. So, V d into I d and there will be another this j V q I q j j minus 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 plus. So, this will be V q I q is not and then the imaginary part will be plus j v q i d this and this and minus j v d i q. Now, v d and i d are in same phase therefore, it will be simply multiplication of v d and into i d v q i q in same phase it will be this one v q i q is not and then plus uh, so so this is the thing plus j whatever it is here v q i d minus v d i q this will be the thing and this will be only magnitudes uh, you know this will be magnitudes v q into i d and this one. Now, the uh, question is uh, that uh, I mean what I am trying to tell that once you get this expression this will give you the real power and this part will give you the reactive power q. If I uh, simplify these expressions and from that I will get the expression of power delivered to the bus or to the load by the salient pole synchronous generator. So, I have assumed generator mode of operation lagging power factor is that clear. So, so that is the thing. Now, therefore, real power delivered is p is nothing but v d i d plus v q i q that is all. Now, recall the v d value is nothing but v sin delta and v q is v oh my god uh, this is v t sin delta and v q is v cos delta correct that eh? v q is cos delta v cos delta v sin delta. So, I will put those values. So, I will write this to be uh, v d is equal to v sin delta into i d plus v q is v cos delta into i q. What is my target? My target is to get an expression of power in terms of excitation voltage, terminal voltage and load angle and x d x q etcetera. 
so that is the target but here you know unfortunately id is present iq is present so i must express this id iq in terms of ia xd xq etc so how this can be done it is very simple you see this length v d is equal to v sin delta mind you this is r a equal to 0 guess so, V sin delta will be nothing but I q into x q this length and this lengths are equal. So, so note that V sin delta is equal to nothing but I q into x q is not that is there and V cos delta v cos delta is equal to E f minus this length this total thing is magnitude of E f minus i d x d. So, so v cos delta is E f minus minus of uh, i d x d i d x d this will be the thing. So, we have to put the value of i q and i d from these two expressions here. So, let us do that. So, v sin delta i d I will write from this I will write it is equal to v cos delta Oh, sorry, I d is equal to E f minus v cos delta divided by x d and I q from this I will write I q is equal to v sin delta by x q. These are the substitution I have to do to get rid of i d and i q. Okay? So, so, v sin delta into i d that is that will be equal to E f minus v cos delta divided by x d plus v cos delta into i q and uh, what is i q? i q is v sin delta by x q that is all. So, now in the right hand side everything is known how do I know delta because I know at what power factor it is operating which mode it is operating this that we discuss so much E f is known excitation voltage x d x q are known v terminal voltage is of course known bus voltage. So, this is the thing. Now, this this if you simplify you will get the first term that is this will give is E f v by x d into sin delta put it inside you will get this. Then the second term from this fellow will be v square sin delta cos delta by x d and this term will be simply v square by x q once again sin delta cos delta it will be like this. Now, uh, this one is uh, do not disturb it I have already got it sin delta nice form then this 2 you divide by 2 multiply by 2. So, that uh, it will become v square by 2 and then 1 by x q this minus 1 by x d into sin of 2 delta and this is the expression for power. 
you have to multiply with 3 to get the total power. So, so this is the expression we are looking for. So, this is the real power expression. If I wish, I can also calculate how much reactive power it is delivering by calculating this put the value of V q I d and you can get the expression for q which I am not doing because I, I will concentrate on this it tells you many things. Recall that so uh, we have got the power as E f v by x d sin delta minus v square not minus plus this is can be written also in this form x d minus x q by x q x d x d x q into sin 2 delta. This uh, compare it compare power expression power or torque this is synonymous with torque uh, because so, co compare power expression of a non salient pole synchronous generator. How it looked like? It was P is equal to per phase E f v these are all phase voltages by x s sin delta. So, first thing you note is that uh, in case of salient pole machines there are two terms one is sin delta another is sin 2 delta. So, in this case uh, uh, the p delta curve looked like this. this is 0, this is pi. Maximum value of delta for stable operating point is pi by 2 that is all. In case of this it will be if you sketch it, it will have two terms. So, one is this term and another is uh, a sign term. It is true delta that therefore, one complete cycle will be present between 0 to pi this is pi by 2 this will be the and this two if you add point by point you will get the expression for power or torque on the y axis. Okay. Now, the question is what is this maximum value? This maximum value depends upon uh, E f v by x d and what is this maximum value of the sin 2 delta terms? it will be v square by 2 into x d minus x q by x d x q is not this will be the maximum value. Now, recall one thing that this is the expression of a salient pole machine. If I say in a machine x d equal to x q what does it mean? It means it is a cylindrical machine there is no difference between direct axis and quadrature axis reactances and this term will become vanish and only sin delta terms will be present if x d is equal to x q. However, in a salient pole machine x d is not equal to x q there will be difference, but not much difference there will be difference and v is the terminal voltage this is a large number no doubt. Here also E f v by x d is a large number, but this factor is not so large a number difference of x d and x q. 
that is how much uh, salient uh, the po pole configuration is is uh, will decide what is this peak value maybe 10 15 percent of this little but uh, anyway this will be the thing so um, and if you add this two point by point so peak will not occur here hmm? Uh, this this curve will be somewhere here. Uh, this curve, if you add, uh, roughly I am drawing, it will be somewhat skew sort of thing. It will be there, uh, 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 and it must pass through this point because this plus this is this, and it will become something like this. This is the sum that is the total power will be that red curve. You see uh, the uh, stable region will then occur slightly below this one. You cannot go up to 90 degree before that maximum operating point will be decided by these things. Where is this load demand you port uh, gate and this will be the operating delta of the synchronous machine. But one interesting thing is that this equation tells me now the second term is called sometimes salient. Because of saliency present, this term is present. It is called uh, reluctance power, reluctance power or torque. It is because salient x d x q are different that is why you are getting this term. And this term this power does not depend on excitation E f. No E f is there V is terminal voltage bus voltage. Therefore, it looks like this point is very important you must understand that a salient pole synchronous machine connected to bus may produce torque or power even when E f is 0. The E f is what? Field current of the synchronous machine. So, suppose field current with 0 this equation tells me that that even steady state operating point okay, it was running you gradually make the field current of the your synchronous machine down to zeros, still a salient pole machine will produce a torque or power. And then the machine is said to be operating as a reluctance motor, because it will still operate at synchronous speed, but the level of power it can handle becomes less, because difference of x d and x q will decide that how much will be the maximum power. But nonetheless what I am trying to stress upon is the fact that a salient pole machine even with field current 0 can produce torque and power. It will still be running at synchronous speed, but uh, the level of power will be reduced no doubt but it will be able to pump some power into the bus or take power from the bus as a motor as well. So, this expression is very important. Okay. Uh, uh, one should uh, memorize this of course, just not uh, that you memorize just out of nothing, but uh, this is worth remembering for solving problems or explaining many other things. That is this term there will be no effect on excitation of this term. So, a salient pole synchronous machine then I know that how to draw the feather diagram correctly, how to fix up the q axis, d axis because I a is to be resolved into I d x q, I d and I q and their effects are to be taken into account by two reactances x d x q. And then this is important how do I find out the 
power. So, we started from the V i a star and that is here from terminal voltage can be written as V d plus J v q similarly i a can be written as i d plus i j q and so on put the values of i a star get rid of uh, i d i q uh, from the phasor diagram and you can get the power delivered by the machine. I will leave as an exercise to you to find out the expression for the power after drawing the phasor diagram of a synchronous motor okay. and uh, solve many problems. In the last uh, next time, I will take maximum another 3 lectures where I will conclude and draw the phasor diagram of synchronous motor. But nonetheless, you on your own try because in case of synchronous motor, you have to start from it is better that is what I do that is uh, translate the problem in terms of addition of vectors it becomes easy draw first E f I a then E f plus I a r a plus J I d x d plus J i q x q will give you terminal voltage and E f will be below V. So, with this note I uh, finish today and we will take up the in the next class uh, some interesting informations about salient pole machines. Thank you.